last week has been kind of crazy. Um, I've been really striving to push out new episodes of the Biz Grind every day. Episode 33 and 34 actually should have been out last week, but I'm sure there's a reason why they weren't. And with that being said, a couple of things in this episode that I want to make sure that you guys pay attention to. One is uh, yesterday was my son's first swimming lesson, so I want to share some footage with that. It was really interesting kind of seeing the process of how infants go through the learning uh, curve of um, figuring out how to swim. So I got some footage on that. And the other thing is uh, I finally got a chance to interview Amy Schmidt Hour, uh, aka a vlog boss. She has a new book uh, called Vlog Like a Boss and she's someone that is now, widely rec recognized as a video influencer, someone who uh, knows the ins and outs of video. Uh, I was very fortunate to uh, chat with her. So I've got the first guest video interview on the Biz Grind YouTube show uh, on this episode. And I'm pretty excited to share that with you guys. Uh, it was actually a rather lengthy one, so there's a lot of information there. Um, that talks about vlogging and why vlogging is so important and as a matter of fact this morning I actually saw uh, an article by Jay Bear uh, titled uh, Video is the number one sought-after marketing skill currently uh, that was published on medium video is definitely not going anywhere anywhere uh, vlogging is an extreme extremely important component of a business and for me is uh, I'm using vlogging particularly the biz grind YouTube show as a lifestyle slash business vlog to help other business owners uh, other other entrepreneurs other individuals understand the humanization aspect of the businesses how can they humanize their brand and for individuals how can they make their lives more efficient more productive by humanizing All right, everyone, today I'm super excited to have Amy Schmidt Hour. Is that correct? Am I pronouncing that correctly? You got it. Nice <laughs> job, Ivan. All right. And the reason I say that is I have a difficult last name, so I totally understand. And I didn't want to butcher that. So first of all, Amy, thank you so much for spending some time with me today. You know, I'm truly, truly excited um, to have you um, here. And uh, the reason I wanted to have you is um, I wanted to talk about vlogging with you a little bit. And, you know, you have a new book uh, out that's called A Vlog Like a Boss. And uh, I know that you've been skyrocketing all, all over the interwebs and people are talking about Amy. And Amy is the person that you need to follow if you want to master vlogging. So can you take a minute or two and just kind of introduce yourself and who you are and you know how did you get into this? Yeah, sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. I enjoy spending the time talking <laughs> about video. It's my passion and I got into this because of that very thing. I just enjoyed making video. I'm coming up on my 10 year anniversary on YouTube. My first video was in 2007 mm -hmm. and I basically wanted to create something to make someone feel special. And that moment really taught me a lot about storytelling with video. So long story short, that's gotten me to this point in terms of using video to convey my message, but also that's turned into me teaching people how to leverage it as well to share their message. Thus the book vlog like a boss which mm -hmm. I never thought I was going to write a book at this point <laughs> in my career. But as a speaker, um, and so with the content creation and social media consulting that I do, and uh, the YouTube world really exposed me to a lot of the business world that wanted me to speak, so I became a speaker. And as I've been speaking for the last five years or so, I would get off stage and people would mm -hmm. ask me for a book. And I'm like, I right, make free videos right. on the internet. Go watch them. And they would rather have books. So that's sure. really why this all came to be. I wanted to write the manual for these people that were so motivated to go get started that mm -hmm. they would need it. So that's pretty much it. I mean, mm -hmm. I really got my start because I loved the art of this, uh, the creative that goes into video right. and telling stories with it. And, and so it's come in handy because 
yet again, it is the year of video, 2017. Right. This is right. always the year of video. <laughs> well, absolutely. I mean, that was actually one of the main reasons I wanted to chat with you because I think video is so essential. And video is so essential, uh, not just from a business standpoint, but I think from a personal branding standpoint. A lot of people are trying to get in, into it. But, you know, there's so many ramifications with video, right? As, you know, everything from your setup to uh, the storyline to, you know, making it funny, making it interesting. So what would your advice be to someone who, okay, so starting out with vlogging, okay, I, I'm going to get on YouTube. I, I'm going to get a channel. So what's your advice to that? Like where, where do you start? Because I think a lot of people are questioning that. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really healthy to just dive in, honestly, mm -hmm. because we have things called smartphones now that allow us to just make videos right away. And that's really great. I think you can't hold yourself back from that because most people will paralyze themselves to not even get started. And that's where the trouble really begins. But in the same breath, I think you should dive in, but also try to navigate some sort of strategy. You mm -hmm. have to know your audience really well. You have to know what you know really well and then get focused around all of those things so that when you start a platform such as YouTube, which can be a long road mm -hmm. for most people is a long road to grow. Um, it, it's important that you're very focused on the type of content you publish there, your why for why you're doing it, mm -hmm. and being able to stay, the fo focus is the word, stay focused around all of that because as you upload every project, you may not see the incredible results that mm -hmm. you might see down the road, but if you don't start and build these archives, you really will never get to that point. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's just so critical, and I talk about it in the book, and it, it might have felt like a lot, um, in terms of this is a book about video and yet there's so much content around planning your programming right. and figuring out who your audience is. But all of that is so critical because it doesn't matter uh, what you think about, let's say you have a product and that product is incredible. Mm -hmm. That's great, but if no one knows about it, you're gonna sit there with your amazing product and no one's gonna know about it. So you have to build the marketing plan. And if the marketing plan includes video, you're dealing with a whole nother product again. Right, the right. video itself becomes a product because now mm -hmm. you have to market that in order to get eyeballs on you so that potentially we'll buy the product. Mm -hmm. That is why you have to build this strategy out and um, also balance taking action at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I'm hearing you say you have to, well, first of all, you have to find the purpose you have to define the strategy the marketing plan right because i think <clears throat> one of the most common mistakes and me being i guess a novice vlogger so to speak or how i'm going to label myself at least in comparison to you anyway but uh, i think a lot of novice vloggers when they start out you know like you said dive right in but they totally missed that strategy component right is that to define the path of what are you going to do what your messaging is going to be right and who are you going to attract because you know, just judging by some of the videos that you've been recording, you know, they're funny, they're humorous, uh, they have good content on there. You know, it's, it's eye-catching. And I think one of the things you mentioned is strategy is something that people miss. You know, they think that, okay, I'm going to be the next uh, PewDiePie or the, the, uh, the next Casey Neistat, which, by the way, I think you recorded a, a video recently uh, that was trying to create a separation because I think what a lot of people think is, okay, I get on YouTube and I'm going to be the next PewDiePie. No, you're not going to be the next PewDiePie. You're not going to be the next, uh, Casey Neistat. You're not going to be the next Gary V, you know? <clears throat> and I think you made a very valiant point is that with the strategy, it, it helps create your positioning to understand like who you are, how you mm -hmm. communicate, who your target audience is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that was extremely important to mention. So, the other thing I wanted to ask you, so, I mean, when you get into vlogging, right, is, which, by the way, you can have an efficient approach to vlogging and you can, like, you know, have a complete blowout. I think a lot right. of people question the, um, uh, the tools, right, the tools, the software. So what advice would you would you give on, on tools? I mean, do you go out and buy, you know, a thousand dollar camera right off the bat and you're completely incoherent to how to use it? Or like what sort of the, the starting point? I'm really glad that you pointed that out because so many people do get deep on the, on the mm -hmm. gear situation. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, I need this fancy camera and I need this lighting and I need this. And then they right. go and buy all the gear and let's say you can spend a grand very easily on mm -hmm. some nice gear, but then maybe you don't know how to use it. It doesn't even matter if you know how to use it. If you aren't right. going to use it, it's right. literally useless to you. Right. And if you haven't gotten past the other barriers uh, or fears of video before that, oh my gosh, that gear doesn't matter at all. Because right. if you couldn't start with the 
computer that fits into your pocket. <laughs> right, right. If you couldn't at least start with this, <laughs> then you're really not going to make it happen when you pick up something a little bit more pricey. Yeah, yeah. It just now that being said, I think sometimes people that are in that mindset are like, I've got to have mm-hmm. the thing in order to do the thing, right? If you buy yourself some nice workout gear, you're much more likely to go to the gym, feel right. confident, and go work out at the gym. But that doesn't mean that there aren't some other things that you have to attack. And so it's it's more about, from the gear perspective, get started with what you have. I mean, when I started, and this was a long time ago, that mm-hmm. first video I made was um, a handheld camera because it, it used to be that we needed these. Right, right. You had to take these on vacation with you <laughs> and to take pictures back then. There were right. no fancy smartphone cameras. Um, I had one, it, it was a Canon power shot, and I noticed that the little dial had a video option on it. Mm -hmm. I checked it out, it worked, and I used it. And that's how I got started. And then I bought a flip cam, and then I hated it, and I kept going back and forth. But you don't need to go buy something if you literally have the equipment in home with you right now. There are incredible vloggers Mm -hmm. who have never uploaded anything but Snapchat videos. (laughs) Interesting. That is is as as simple as, if you're not familiar, pressing a button for 10 seconds. Right. And and publishing it to a social platform. Absolutely. That, that is literally what YouTube vlogging used to be. It, well, still is actually mm-hmm. jump cutting, except for we had to do it in Final Cut Pro. They right. gave it to the average user in a smartphone app and with no no skill set needed. So right. if you can do that, if you could get started today and use Instagram stories, Facebook, whatever stories or, or video, Twitter mm-hmm. video, Snapchat stories you could use any one of those just to start today mm-hmm. wouldn't need anything other than internet and a smartphone and an account for something right and you start right now and that connection with your audience because you looked at the lens of the camera on mm-hmm. your phone is that first barrier you need to break down before you're worried about yeah gear. yeah and I'm, I'm i'm glad you you attested to that because i think one of the most common mistakes that people make is that you know, they, they splurge on equipment when the point that you made that I think is extremely important to recognize is that, you know, we've got these things, smartphones, and by the way, I'm streaming some of this on Facebook Live right now via my phone, just preoccupied. I just really, well, it's really kind of just me here. So people are going to have to wait until the video goes up on the YouTube show. So Amy, (laughs) hey, hey, on Facebook Live. Um, Facebook Live. (laughs) um, So it's really interesting you mentioned that because you know, I think smartphones have really rejuvenated how we as human beings really interact. And from a video perspective, has have really helped us. For instance, I just purchased a gimbal not too long ago. And I got to tell you, I love that. It's the DJI, oh, DJI Mobile. Isn't that dope? Oh. oh, my God. That thing. We is... love it. We love it. It's <laughs> yeah, a life changer. Yeah. Absolutely. But we had to convince ourselves we needed it right, first, right, right? right? Like we had to have shaky, terrible video for too long to I be like, we, I literally feel the pain of not owning that piece of equipment. And mm-hmm. that is is what's going to change the fact that you allocate budget, you allocate mm-hmm. resources, you look how right. to use it, you make sure you're using it properly, and then you get it and then you use it. And it's not right. just going to go collect dust right. somewhere because you're afraid to talk to the lens of a camera, which doesn't have anything to do with a gimbal. Right. Well, and you just proved another point is consistency. Because I think mm-hmm. the biggest thing that you have done, and I think the biggest thing that a lot of people overlook in vlogging is consistency, right? Is just that, so you start out, you know, your first video, you might get one or two views and everybody's like, oh crap, I didn't get any views on my video, <laughs> right? And they become right. discouraged, right? And I think the real, real challenge here is is to be consistent because to get to be someone like if you want to compare yourself to Gary Vee or Casey Neistat or PewDiePie, and if you want to use them as uh, idols, you know, that's your benchmark sort of is it's going to take you a long time, but at least you have something to strive towards. Right. And you have to be consistent with it. And I think that's one of the things that you've done very well is this that, you. you know, you've diversified your messaging in your videos, which, by the way, I absolutely love. I'm subscribed to your channel. And well, thank you. <laughs> you're quite welcome. Um, totally love the messaging and the context. And, and I think, you know, looking at guys like PewDiePie and Casey Neistat and, you know, um, Philip DeFranco, I think, is another mm-hmm. one. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, these guys have been consistent with video since day one. I mean, yeah. the reality of things is, is that it is time consuming, you know, to vlog. It really is. And sure. I think a lot of people question the value behind it, right? 
Um, right. So you start out and, you know, it's time consuming. It's resource driven. Also, it's uh, uh, technologically uh, challenging as well, especially mm -hmm. for people that are not tech savvy. Mm -hmm. So like, OK, am I going to use Final Cut Pro? Or I think you did a video on Adobe Spark not too long ago, which, by the mm -hmm. way, was an awesome video Thank um, you. that gives people an insight into the fact that, look, tools and resources have become a lot more accessible. You just got to learn how to use it. And I think that's your smallest of challenges is to learn the technology, right? right? The tools, what you really need to focus on is your story, right? Because I think one of the things that you've done very well, which I think has led up to the Vlog Like a Boss book, is just that you've really focused on the personal branding and the added value proposition. And I think people have taken notice. So, um, Well, and I think because I... <sighs> There's there's a million different people talking about YouTube. There's a million different people talking about Snapchat. There's a million different people talking about Facebook. These are all just vehicles for a mm -hmm. greater thing that we're doing. So that is why I think when you subscribe to me, I want to get practical with you because I feel like that's how I bring the heat. Like I just I want to tell you yep. things to do. Go do it right now. Like I think that's how I've slightly differentiated myself in a very fluffy marketing world. Right. But at the same time. I want you to think bigger picture. I want you to think about the fact that yes, these are hard tasks. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is learner's curve. Yes, you have to figure out how to turn a computer on. Like there are <laughs> things going on here that you have to learn, but right. when you keep the why in mind, and for the most part, my community, it has to do with personal branding on some level, whether they're a small business owner or they just want to be the rock star in their company. Mm -hmm. You don't have to own a business to get value out of what I teach because I simply want you to go after the life that you want and make it happen yourself. Don't be a victim and be mm -hmm. proactive about it so you can use everything I teach you to do that. That right. is personal branding. And and I think that that's something people should consider too when they're teaching and, and in their purpose like you. Mm -hmm. I mean like you have to think how can I get you activated and so we get really practical there but let me also be your teacher in terms of thinking big picture so that you right. don't lose the focus and get frustrated over these little things like what right. the heck is Adobe Spark Final Cut Pro and why do I care about Snapchat like right. they're valid questions but at least you're in sort of like a, a space of acceptance mm -hmm. because you understand what the benefits of this will be mm -hmm. you know not to cross pollinate too much but you would talked about uh, Snapchat and Instagram and yeah. uh, Carlos Gill, who uh, I know you know as well as mutual yeah. acquaintance of ours is, um, I think it was in a keynote recently that he had did that talked about how there's this huge mis misconception in the business marketplace and it's mainly in these legacy or dinosaur companies, so to speak, um, that think that Snapchat is just for teeny boppers or as mm -hmm. they call them teeny boppers, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a, such a huge misconception. I think the Snapchat IPO recently too is a clear indication that Snapchat is here to stay and companies Absolutely. need to figure out a way you know, how to embrace that. So when you were talking about vlogging and, you know, uh, I think Anchor is another app, which is for mini casting, but it's more on the audio is, I think sure. what we're seeing in the marketplace is is that a lot of these apps are, are emerging, right? to allow consumers and companies equally to really focus on the personalization. My whole mantra is human business. So mm -hmm. that really kind of cross pollinates with that, with social media, with vlogging. And this is kind of, I'm shifting towards more of context because that's the next question that I wanted to ask you in the storyline. Like what are things that people need to be considering when they're doing vlogging? I think people set themselves up for the mistake right off the bat that they're going to fail. Right. They mm. don't have that sense of optimism. And that's mm. why it's important to seek out someone like you, you know, who's experienced and has done this that can guide them in the path of how, you know, they start from zero to, you know, I think you have 57,000 subscribers on your video channel. Right. So how do I get from zero to 60, so to speak? So that's my question that I wanted to ask you. So we talked about social. What advice would you give to people about the storyline? So, hey, we're on video right now. Right. And we're just chatting about stuff. And most people are like, well, what am I going to talk to Amy about? Well, what are you not going to talk to Amy about? So from a vlogging perspective, what are some tips that you can give to people uh, in terms of developing their storyline and their messaging and their context? Because I think that's one of the biggest struggles. Absolutely. Well, I think I, 
first of all, I mean, it does just break down to that strategy. You, you help one person. What does that person need from you and how do you best assist them? I think that's like the core of it. But as you were saying before, context has a lot to do with it. And, uh, I think I, I 100% agree with Carlos and the misconception isn't even the issue. Mm -hmm. It's not looking at where the kids are going and saying something's happening here. I would argue that Twitter is still alive because the kids are still on it. The kids still use Twitter. <laughs> People do not think about that. Right. And we think it's a very business B2B place, but it's just because of the right. circles that you and I might be in. There are lots of kids. And right. average people talking about the Oscars using Twitter. It mm -hmm. is still a, an incredible mainstream tool. So instead of saying how how something might be a fad, instead of worrying about that, instead of being like, this is going to be such a waste of time for us to spend time and resources to learn how to use this. Right. If it's possible to get attention there and maybe the kids are onto something because they had to go somewhere after the grandparents started populating Facebook, right. then why don't you go try it <laughs> and see what happens? Because it may not be your target demo, but what if it would be later? Right. Like a, like a candy company is going to make bank if they invest in a place where the kids are hanging out. But right, right. that's that's sort of... That's sort of going off point a little bit, but not really because you take your strategy, you take the purpose, you take the audience, and then you mm -hmm. figure out where they are. You have to pay attention to that. And then you look at all of these social networks mm -hmm. and you look yeah. at them like they're different parties to go to. And right. there's Facebook. And Facebook is like a family reunion. So that's sort of the context <laughs> of that place, right? And that's, then Snapchat is like yeah. a rave. Like it right. is just all the things. Yep. Instagram is yep. looking a little bit like fashion week. Mm -hmm. and YouTube is like a sleepover party. I mean, you just, you you give these places their, their designation in your right. mind. Because that context is going to help you so much with developing the story. Right. Right. Why right. does content work on this platform? How do people like to receive it? Mm -hmm. What do they most engage with? How do we take our story and fit it into that mold? You're going to be hard up on my Twitter account to not see very many GIFs on my feed because people just love video on Twitter, but they don't have a lot of time. So mm -hmm. a GIF yeah. that takes no time and no audio mm -hmm. is going to play and I get more engagement and I get more clicks and I get more retweets because of it. So that's sort of the context there. This quick, fast news feed where you have to do things that are flashy and billboardy right. in order to right. get attention. That's that. On YouTube, somebody wants to watch a video. They want to. They're choosing to. It's intentional. Right. They see a headline. They see a thumbnail, a frozen thumbnail, and they intentionally click on a link to watch that video. What mm -hmm. did you do to win them over to come to your sleepover party? That's essentially what you've got to do there. It's a right. very different situation on Facebook because you upload video over there. It automatically plays on a news feed mm -hmm. without audio. That right. is disruptive. They were hanging out with their friends and family when your video just showed up <laughs> and you got to pull them in. It has nothing to do with the headline or a thumbnail because it's right. just rolling. Right. You have to look at each of these things like they're different parties with different attires and different behaviors and different mm -hmm. ways of being because once you sort of break down that wall for yourself, you can show up, fit in, and use your personality mm -hmm. to let them know why you're special. And I think that's the biggest thing people don't do. Right. They say, here's what we're going to do. Here's what our soapbox is. Let's go deliver it. Right. And they copy paste across all of the social media land. Right. And that's the worst thing you could do. Repurpose does not mean copy paste. Right. Repurpose means taking something that was made for one area and mm -hmm. customizing it for the other areas that we should spread the love on. Right. It, it right. doesn't mean you can only post a video in one place and then it just has to sit there. You need to market it in other places where you have leverage. Mm -hmm. But how do you put it in that context. And so people don't outline that. And that gets complicated and it's a little webby right now, right? Because it's like, oh, all these networks and there's so much to say and where's the right. main point of content? Where's the secondary point of content? And then you use all the, so there's a lot, which right. is why I also say, choose one or two right? and kill it. Like just kill it mm -hmm. because too many people join all the social networks, try to be everywhere, put all the links on their website and are mediocre at best on mm -hmm. every one of them instead of just crushing it on yeah, one. Yeah. You know, this is getting really deep because you made I know, a very... I, I just went on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that was really good. I mean, that was really good. I mean, this is exactly, this is exactly, you know, the type of conversations that I really get into is 
Um, you know, and you were talking about how to create the differentiation between the different social networks. That was a really, really interesting comparison on the different parties because I think a lot of companies still don't understand the need no, of being on Facebook all. or Snapchat or, or Twitter. And interesting you mentioned about uh, the different generations also, how they use these social platforms. So I think it comes down to, again, you made a very valid point about a pick in one or two, specifically where your buyer persona resides. And before mm -hmm. I lose my train of thought is I wanted to segue into uh, TubeBuddy, which you made a video yeah. on recently. And why I wanted to mention that is um, when you were talking about strategy, there was one thing that you pointed out that I think is key worth men mentioning is keyword research. So when mm -hmm. you start out in doing your video is, you know, like, uh, for instance, my my blog is about it's a, it's a combo between lifestyle and business and family. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's kind of mm -hmm. like a mixed blend. So it kind of appeals to a very broad audience. But if you're trying to target someone specific, right. Uh, TubeBuddy, which is a plugin for for YouTube, uh, you can use to do that keyword research to figure out what are people searching and you know my mm -hmm. background is in search so i spent the last 11 years doing search marketing so when you mentioned TubeBuddy, i'm like holy crap like this thing is like the holy grail literally yeah. to like youtube well, it's huge not in its literal sense but it really is a very yeah. beneficial tool to have so you know can you share a little bit about how do you use TubeBuddy? I mean, I know you did a video on it, but like, you know, give a one, two, three crash course of like, okay, TubeBuddy, where do you start? How do you figure out to create your storyline with your next video? So TubeBuddy is great. I mean, I, I, I can't say enough about it and I don't even use it to the greatest degree that I think mm -hmm. you could, but I don't think you have to either because it's it's incredibly useful just as you learn how to use it. I mean, you could do everything from design custom thumbnails with it. I mean, there's just so many features. But the main thing here is you are going to have a hard time growing on YouTube if no one knows you're there. So right. with it being the second largest search engine in the world, only second to its adopted mom, Google, and all the results right. on YouTube also factoring into Google, you want to leverage those opportunities as they are a fit. So if there's, let's say, I'll give the example of... Um, um, how to get more followers on Twitter. That's one of my most popular videos on my channel because I did some keyword research around it and I, I right. did well enough that it's bringing in a lot of traffic. And the nice thing about YouTube and that makes it still today an anomaly other than Pinterest is mm -hmm. that something that you did eons ago can still pay off for you today mm -hmm. if it you know kind of flies in referral and search content. The, the basics of it is this. Use YouTube like a normal user. Mm -hmm. Go to the search bar and simply search something that you're you think that there's a need for it. Like people are asking this question a lot. Let's see what's showing up in search. When you start to use a Google or a YouTube search bar, as you type your question or your query, there's a predictive list that right. appears below it. And those are basically telling you Based on what you're typing right now, these are the top ten re top ten searched items mm -hmm. for this for this basic like where you're going. Right, right. So if you if you start typing, you know uh, how to create, you're going to get examples of what the top ten searches are. How to create mm -hmm. a website, how to create a YouTube channel. You're going to get a lot mm -hmm. of suggestions there. So you can see what's already highly searched, mm -hmm. and this might start to give you some ideas. But let's just say we go to the search bar and type in a a, a search term like more more followers on Twitter. Right. You type that in. TubeBuddy offers the opportunity to not only you're you're looking at the search results once you hit the enter button and the search results show up. TubeBuddy gives you a button to essentially analyze this term that you put into right. search, and it will look at more followers on Twitter and it'll kind of give it a grade. And that grade is based on is this highly searched and is this high is there high competition mm -hmm. it factors in those two things if there's a lot of search for this but a lot of competition it may get a low grade because Although it's actually fairly simplistic to get on the front page of YouTube search, mm -hmm. if there is just a ton of competition that's going to blow you out of the water, especially because you have zero subscribers and no momentum behind every video, right. then it's going to tell you, like, don't bother. But if it gives you a good grade, it might be because it's highly searched but low competition. Mm -hmm or it's moderately searched and moderate competition, it'll give you a grade and you can say, you know what, TubeBuddy has indicated to me at this point that right. this would be a valuable topic to go in on. So based on the research, you, you, you look at all the tags they suggest based mm -hmm. on what you think you want this video to be about, you take 
that phrase that mm-hmm. you searched verbatim and you put it in a headline of a YouTube video and mm-hmm. you build out the headline so that it has that exact phrase in it and you want to try to get it as early on in the headline as possible. Mm-hmm. But you need a headline, you need that phrase in your description now, and you need that phrase in your tags. And then you need some supporting tags, which TubeBuddy right. will also right. help you with. And that is the basis for a very well researched video mm-hmm. that could perform in search and or referral content for you. It doesn't mean it's going to be amazing every single time, but you at least sort of covered your bases to potentially give it the opportunity to fly. And that video that I did how to get more followers on Twitter is an example yeah. of one that very high competition at first. Mm-hmm. So there wasn't a whole lot of success at the beginning, but because my audience kept watching it and liking it and commenting right. on it, you know, a year or so later, it became the top result in search. And now all of that search traffic that's going to Google or YouTube searching for that information, they're seeing my video and they're discovering me. Mm -hmm. So that is why TubeBuddy or keyword research, you know, keyword research in general is important on YouTube. That is why it's very important because you actually have a hot chance of making it happen. You know, this was just like a powerhouse of a jam right there. This short segment that you just went on to. And and here's why. I just want to touch on a couple of points that I think were extremely important. Um, first of all, you mentioned YouTube. Uh, you know, like the vehicles that you talked about earlier on. Mm-hmm. These are vehicles. And what a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world. So much that I think uh, YouTube is launching um, a live streaming TV in limited markets. Um, Mm -hmm. in just a couple of cities. And so where I think this is segueing is into, you know, YouTube is the new TV or it has been really. And the types of users that go to YouTube are the ones that are looking for uh, lengthier videos. So you mentioned like the how to's, which are, believe it or not, at least in my experience, have been some of the easiest to rank for if you Mm -hmm. wanted to drive traffic, like how to do something. So much that even Google returns results from YouTube, videos from YouTube, when you search for those kinds of queries. So that's the first thing that you emphasize. The other thing is you talked about process. So before actually starting to do your your storing line and your messaging and developing your context and your strategy, most importantly, is that you pay your due diligence in doing the keyword research. And that's where TubeBuddy, I think, is such a great tool. And again, it's a tool, it's a vehicle that you can use to mm-hmm. help you research, optimize, and be successful with, with your videos. So, Definitely. you know, I think that was very key. And uh, these are some of the things that you talk about in your book, right? Vlog Like a Boss. Is, yes. You know, how to ma- oh, master. It. There it is. I think I saw it right Yay. on the background. There <laughs> it is. Keep it right here because I always there forget. It to have there it, it is. <laughs> Um, yeah. But which, by the way, people that are watching this, make sure you get this book because it is freaking awesome. And I'll definitely put a link on there as well. Um, uh, Amy, uh, is there anything else um, in terms of vlogging that you wanted to highlight upon that, you know, so for especially for novice people that really are trying to find the groove, right? Like, where do I go? How do I start? Because a lot of people are impatient with video. That's the reality of it. You know, and I think one of the things that people are still trying to overcome is kind of that the public insecurity of like, okay, I'm walking around with my gimbal and I'm taking video, right? And like the public perception, you know, in the world that we live in. But the reality of things is that, you know, I think vlogging, especially for personal branding, is a key, key ingredient because what a lot of companies look for nowadays is when they, for instance, when people decided to do business with you is they research you online, they look at your YouTube channel. So they're doing their homework and trying to learn more about the individual or the company. So I mm-hmm. think this is where vlogging is extremely important. So what other advice could you give to people that, you know, we haven't talked about yet? I think the biggest thing, and I'm really glad that you said that thing about public perception, because that's exactly where I wanted to go with this. I think the (laughs) biggest issue that people have with a lot of things, I think, in social media in general, but Mm -hmm. certainly with talking to a camera, is that um, they don't focus on who they're really doing this for. I mean, you can sit down and do this whole strategy and come up with your avatar and be like, this is for you. I'm so excited. I'm making this for you. But sometimes you're going to have those tough moments where you're like, I am making this for them, but I feel like people are judging me. Not the person I'm making this for, but the other people that might matter to me a little bit. And the reality is that people don't usually get on board your gravy train until you're successful in some way. It's Mm -hmm. just true, you know, and, and so without looking at the lens of the camera, like it is the person you're doing this for, Mm -hmm. you will go nowhere with this. You can have incredible charisma. 
you can have a great uh, a great plan, but if you don't talk to the camera like it's the person you're doing this for, it's just gonna fall flat, short term right. or long term. And so you can spend time worrying about other people judging you, but it's likely not the person you're doing this for, and that's who you need to focus on mm-hmm. as you push through the beginnings and the hard times and the uncomfort. Right. Because if you do your job and you deliver on the promise that you gave, that person that's on the other side of this camera is going to mm-hmm. lift you up and get you further along in this game. So that is the biggest thing I could have anybody take away. If you did nothing else, if you had the worst camera, if you didn't have any lighting, if your audio is terrible, hopefully none of these things is the case because we have great technology in a smartphone right, these days. Right. But if you simply look at the camera like you have one person in mind and you're gonna deliver for them and you owe it to them and you feel like you wanna be that person for them, that's gonna get you so far. That's gonna be, get you so yeah. far. It's the only reason why people know who I am today. Yeah, sure, I knew about you, video before everybody else seemed to get on the bandwagon. But if I didn't think about who my customer really was mm-hmm. and go and show up for them three times a week for as long as I did until it seemed to matter, then I wouldn't be here. I just wouldn't be here. But I needed that community to come along with me, to grow with me, to get through all the tough times with me because I showed up for them, they showed up for me, and now incredible things are happening. Like I wrote a book. Like, that's great. Yeah. But you've got to do it for the one person. You know, I mean, you mentioned something really important too that I wanted to highlight is that I think people make a lot of assumptions and they're very judgmental, especially with video, because I think there's a lot of people who still have insecurities about getting in front of a camera, right? Mm -hmm. And like, okay, me and you are chatting here on video and it's like, uh, most people are like, well, what am, what am I going to talk about, right? Mm-hmm. So I think, you know, creativity is obviously a huge component of this as well. Not only, you know, technology, technology helps you accomplish the video, edit the video, master it, render it, put it up on YouTube, right? But, you, you know, you also need to figure out uh, how are you going to communicate also. So uh, I think to some extent, I guess the question that I try to to, to ask is um, about additional advice is maybe it was geared to more, towards more like introverts, specifically mm-hmm. because i think introverts might struggle with okay i get in front of a camera i think you did a video not too long ago as mm-hmm. well that talked about you know what are some of the basics that you need to consider in doing every video you know obviously to buddy and you know your equipment and you know your smartphone you know which can really help you comprise that video as well but i think a lot of people overthink it rather than just doing it right and kind mm-hmm. of diving right in i mean that was the first thing you mentioned when we started off is dive right in because the best the best way to learn is to experience right i think yes. a lot of people are hesitant and okay what kind of camera am i going to use if my video is crappy or my audio is crappy uh so i think what i'm trying to say and at least what i heard you mention is that you know focus on the messaging and the storyline and um having a strategy also because you know even though let's say your video is not the greatest which hopefully that's not the case or your audio is people are going to pay attention more to the context rather than you know how good the video was or maybe it was choppy here and there because of technology deficiencies or internet problems or whatnot right during the recording so you know you mentioned some real interesting points um how can people aside from your youtube channel which by the way has fifty seven thousand subscribers you know at this at this point congratulations on all your success how else can people connect with you i mean in, in the social space yeah, I mean, everything is always at SavvySexySocial.com. That's mm-hmm. details about where I am socially as well as where the blog where I host all the video content and uh, details about buying the book and, and hiring me to speak, all the things that I okay. do. Everything's at SavvySexySocial.com. Awesome, awesome. Amy, thank you so much for jamming with me. I mean, I think this was an awesome session talking about vlogging. And I got to tell you, I learned a thing or two already from some of the things that you mentioned. I'm hoping that, you know, the viewers of my show also are going to do the same because I think this was a powerhouse of information. And I would definitely push the book as well because, as a matter of fact, I still need to get a copy as well because I need to learn from you because you are the master of vlogging, at least what the internet is saying currently anyway. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. I also hope that your community takes action. Ivan, I it's been a pleasure to chat with you today. Anytime. Thanks so much.